What's the biggest thing, considering what you do, that you take away from Beer Wars? The movie is everything I want to do. I want to say no to Budweiser. I want to say no to Miller. You see my tabs? You see anything out there like that? Welcome back to the Happy Hour, guys, and welcome to the lobby of the Clearview Cinemas here in Chelsea. We are here tonight for the Beer Wars live event. I officially have my Happy Hour, guys, gear. Nothing says wear me with a t-shirt like vintage fur in Chelsea. Beer Wars, it is David versus Goliath, big versus small, corporate versus craft, the Yankees versus everybody else. Director Anant Barron is going to take us on a tour of how the American beer industry really works. It's sort of a no-holds-barred exploration of what goes on behind your favorite beer label. It is actually a war out there between corporate and craft. And what side do you think we're on? Not corporate! So it's not just about beer, it's also about living the American dream. It's about what happens to these entrepreneurs when they try to premiere their products in a really competitive and demanding and intimidating world. Afterwards, we're totally going to some parties because why would you go to a movie about beer and not go to the after party, right? Let me tell you what, nobody throws money around like the booze industry. So throw some at us! I'm really interested to get in there and see what goes on behind the scenes. Jimmy? So here's Bear Wars in a nutshell. Director Anat Baron frames the ongoing battle between the little guys and the big guys, led by the biggest, which is Anheuser-Busch, InBev, or whatever they're called now. These guys make a lot of beer. I mean, here's just one of about a billion bottling lines that they have, but their beer has no taste, at least not in comparison with the craft beer industry or the little guys. So, because people love tasty beer, the little guys, like Dogfish Head in Delaware, founded by Sam Calagione, are growing by like 40% a year. Meanwhile, the big guys are hardly growing at all, and they are sneaky. Will justice be served? We can tell you one thing, watching this movie gave us a power Powerful thirst for really good craft beer. Back to you, Kate. Here we are at Rattle and Hum, uh, which is a craft beer bar in joyous post-celebration of our visit to Beer Wars. I am drinking a tiny sample of Hefeweizen, and I'm going to finish this before I move on to this mother. <laughs> It was fascinating. It was really interesting, and it was fun. And there was a post-show discussion carried live via satellite, moderated by Ben Stein, which was bizarre. But, you know, he was great, except when he wasn't clearing his throat all the time, which always makes me uncomfortable. Don't you hate it when somebody's talking and they haven't cleared their throat, and you're like, dude, clear your throat. I'm Patrick. I'm like more like a owner-manager of Rattling Home, and the movie, I thought, was an eye-opener to the world, <laughs> really. In, in terms of craft beer, and not just that, like, for me being in the craft beer industry, it's about time somebody stood up and said, like, no more to Budweiser Miller. They told me, personally, that I'm, a, I'm not a good business person, that if I don't have Budweiser, or if I don't have something else on tap, then I'm going to fail. The movie just spoke for today. I told Budweiser to more or less fuck off about six months ago. i got people here tonight enjoying just craft beer, and they're enjoying quality. They don't mind about, like, the extra two dollars because they're drinking good, good beer. If you have a local brewery near you, guys who are making beer because they love to make beer, go try some. That's the stuff you should be tasting. Go check that out. And we'll see you next time. Let me tell you, when the curry chips get here, I'm going to turn into an entirely different person. 